Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be working with solids and looking at different uh, solid operations that we can do to create more complex geometry. Alright, so uh, we're going to dive into a new document and we're going to create a, two different definitions essentially. One of them is going to be a, a bit more sort of a bit more random, the other one's going to have a bit more structure to it. So we'll start with um, we'll start with the random one first. So we're going to select these two curves and we'll bring them in as curve geometry. Oops, I want to set multiple curves. And then I'm just going to rebuild those. Um, rebuilding will just make sure we've got a bit of um, inherent structure to our curves, which is what we want. And then I'm going to loft those together. Cool, so there's my base surface. I can turn those off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a bounding box around that. And we're going to evaluate this box. And so what I, what I want for this evaluation is uh, just a a flat array of planes inside this box. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start with a range component. I'm going to plug in a slider with a maximum value of 10. I'll plug that into my step size, or my, my number of steps, sorry. And what this box component, or what this evaluate box component is asking for is a U parameter, a V parameter, and a W parameter. So by default they're all 0 0.5 which means it's going to find the exact middle of the box. And so we could start by plugging these in and bumping up our slider and it's just going to create a diagonal line because it's referencing each of these with itself. So 0, 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. What I want to do is I want to cross reference these I want to cross-reference it against itself, and then I'm going to plug that into my U and V, and that's going to give me a grid. I'm also just going to add a slider over here for my W parameter, just so I've got a height value to work with. Now what I'm going to do is, again, is I'm going to use a surface closest point, and I'm going to take each of these points, and I'm going to reference them I'm going to find the closest point on this surface. That's going to give me a whole lot of points. And I'm going to turn this bounding box off just so we can see what's going on. Now, what this surface closest point component gives us is a couple of things. It gives us the closest point on that surface. It gives us a UV coordinate of that point on that surface. And it gives us a distance between the point we were searching from and it's uh, and where it was searching to. All right, so this UV coordinate is going to be quite useful to us because what we can do is we can evaluate the surface at this UV point. See, the surface closest point doesn't give us any sort of normal or um, plane information, which is what I wanted but the evaluate surface does. So I can turn these off now and we get a whole lot of planes on our surface. Um, what I'm also going to add in here is just a, uh, a sort of straightening vector and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. So I'm going to take a multiplication of this. I'm not going to use the point or the plane, also called the frame, I'm going to use the... and so I'm going to multiply these. I'm going to multiply the first one by the slider, and I'm going to multiply the second one by a value of 1 minus the slider. So this will just... Um, what this will basically do is this will allow me to sort of create or shift the vector in either direction. So if I were to set it to zero, 
it would give me a complete uh, z directional vector. In fact, you know what? I'll show you how this, oh, what this is doing with uh, the vector display tab uh, component. That might make explain it a bit better. Okay, so there's my anchor point for the vector, and there's my vector. So as I change this at at uh, one units on the slider, it's going to be giving me a normal which is exactly equal to the normal coming out of here. And then as I drag this down all the way to zero, it's going to give me a z uh, a z vector pointing straight up at each of these points. And so what it's basically doing is sort of as you drag the slider back and forth, it's weight. So pardon me. It's weighting the normal value uh, one way or the other. All right. Um, we'll, okay. So now we can get rid of that, and I'm going to create a plane normal. This just takes the normal vector that we've created and makes a plane from it. We also need an origin, and now I'm going to create a series of boxes. And so it's asking for a base plane, which we've created. And I'm going to plug in a slider, give it a max value of 10 into my x, y, and z. And so you know what? I'm happy with it around there somewhere. And so now if we were to drag this parameter up, you'll just, I mean, you'll, you'll get subtle variation across it because this is. This is about our sort of moving our planes upwards and downwards, and as you move it up and down, it's going to find a new closest point on that surface. And then we can also change our straightening vector. So as it approaches zero, we will get completely uh, in line, or not in line cubes, but um, completely or the same the cubes that are facing the exact same direction. All right. Um, so maybe I want it at about 0.558. Maybe I don't, but you know. All right, and so now we're gonna bring in some of our uh, our solid operations. We'll drop down solid difference, solid intersection, um, trim solid, and uh, split breadth. Is there any others? Uh, nope. Nope. All right. So I'm just going to make a clone of this surface, just so I've got easier access to it over here. And I'm going to turn off all of this. All right, so we'll start with a trim. So this is asking me for a shape to trim, which is going to be this. and. The second input is the trimming shape, which are all of these. And so as we create that, I'm just going to turn off this surface as well. You'll see we get a whole lot of nice squarish holes in our surface. Um, if we were to plug in the solid intersection, what we're going to get is these sort of uh, split cu uh, split cubes, which is split according to that surface. Um, if we were to do a solid difference, that'll um, what it's sort of doing is it's uh, it's subtracting. It's subtracting the surface from all of these cubes, whereas before the solid intersection was sort of looking at where they, uh, where the two pieces of geometry intersect, and creating a resulting shape. And now the last one is the split. And so if we plug these in, this. Uh, this one does something a bit different in that it it will create a surface or it actually it basically does 
what a trim does, but it gives you both results. So it'll give you the trimmed shape as well as the bit that was cut out. All right. So yeah, we could uh, we could go back and mess around with the slider. And now what you're gonna notice is this is this is one of the okay. I'm just I'm showing you this how to do this because. I mean, there will be some points at which you will want to use the um, the solid and the intersection operations, but you can see just how much this slider is really lagging as I'm moving it up and down. And so, in general, I try to avoid using these components as much as possible. I'll try to figure out another way to do it, because I'm only trimming, what, we maybe like 25... Yeah, 25 shapes here. If you were to try to do any more than that, it's it's really going to get very, very messy. Um, but sometimes you just can't achieve this result any other way. Alright, so that was the first sort of definition. Now we're going to create another one. In this one, we're going to use a point cylindrical component. Um, I'm going to drop down a range component as well, like we usually do. And my first range is going to be pi, or I'm not, sorry, my um, domain for my first range. And I'm going to set a multiplier of maybe up to 10. I'm also going to plug in another slider for my number of steps, and I'll set this to 64. And maybe I'll just give that 32 for now. So that's going to be my angle. Now I also need one for my radius. And so I'm going to grab another slider, plug that in, and that's my radius value. And you know what? That slider might need to be quite a bit larger. So I'll change this value to 100. Alright, there we go. And you know what? I'll just plug that into the elevation as well. And I'm going to quickly change this to an integer slider. And you know what? Maybe I only want half a rotation. So only if I'm only putting in 1 times pi, that's only going to give me 180 degrees. Alright, cool. So now um, I'm going to interpolate through these points. Turn those points off. Now I'm going to create a variable pipe from this curve. And the variable pipe asks for a few things. So the curve parameter, the radii, um, and 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 the kind of cap you would like. So our main worries here are the parameter and the radii. So I'm going to create two sliders. I'll plug those in. And because I'm only going to be setting my sliders to zero and or to values of zero and one, I'm going to reparameterize this curve. Now I'm going to make a copy of this slider and I'm going to set it. This is going to be my radius value. So I'm going to set it to a maximum of I don't really know. Let's just set it to a hundred to be safe. And so we'll plug one. Okay, and you'll notice the variable pipe's throwing an error, and that's because we've got two two parameter values and only one radius value. As soon as we plug in two radii, we're good again. Okay, and so I'm going to create this uh, almost, I don't know what to call it, maybe like a conch shell sort of shape. And uh, yeah, we'll do something like that. I'm also going to turn off this previous result and hide these curves. All right, so now I'm going to take this variable pipe and I'm going to use the divide surface component. And we're going to plug in 
two sliders. I'll set the maximum value to 10 for each of these. And we'll, okay, we'll bump that up to 10 for now. And so this is going to be my sort of, um, my axis divisions. And so I'm going to set that to maybe 8, because I like the number 8. And then I'm going to set this one to 5. And then we're going to create a whole bunch of spheres on each of these points. And they're really tiny at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, not a die, a range. I'm going to throw down a range component. And I'm going to plug in this number 5. And let me just check my data structure over here. So what we've got are six lists, each with nine components, which correspond with the U and the V count plus one. So that works out really well for me because I want to create spheres with an increasing radius along this direction. So if there's six, uh, six trees, that's going to match up with this slider that I've plugged in, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to bring in a construct domain. I'm going to spell that properly. And I'm going to set the values to, I'll set it to a maximum of 10. So that's my start and my end. And maybe I'll bump that up a little bit more, maybe somewhere around six and a half. And if I plug that into my radius, it's not going to work straight away because we're going to have a mismatch of data. So you see it's it's sort of increasing along the, uh, the axis direction. So what we're just going to do is we're going to graft these so that we have a matching data structure. And the way you can see that is if I plug this in, we have six branches with nine points. If I plug this in, we just have six uh, one branch with six items, so as soon as we graph that, we're going to get six branches, each with one data item in it. And so when we match it up with these, or with this data tree, it's going to plonk one of those spheres at each size along our surface. Cool, so now I can delete those. And I can just adjust these radii, or these radii values for my sphere. I can also adjust them for my conch shell shape. And you know what? I'll just leave it there. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to cap this pipe. We could have capped the pipe in here, but you'll notice that if I were to do that, okay. Let me just grab out a panel and plug this in, just so we can see how this changes. So as soon as... okay, so at the moment it's set to no cap. As soon as I change this to either a flat cap or a round cap, it changes from an untrimmed surface into a closed brep. And a closed brep is technically not a surface, which means that it cannot be divided like a normal surface could. So we're going to change that back to none and cap basically does exactly what we want it to do. It just caps the geometry. And so now we've got our two, um, our two solids for operation and we're going to go back to our intersect tab and we'll drop down all these shapes, all these modifiers again. Okay, so let's see. Solid difference. Let's see if I plug this one in and then this one in. Ah, okay, we're going to get a slight problem here because my data structure is going to be mismatching a little bit. So, yeah, so we're getting six surface results. And so, what we want to do is we want to flatten this. And as soon as we do that, oh, let me just turn off the pipe that I created over here. Okay, there we go. So there is our first shape.
it's uh, we've done a solid difference, which means it's taken this conch as our base shape, and it's subtracted all of our spheres from that shell. All right, our next one, the solid intersection. We plug that in. We plug that in. And uh, okay, so this is a some. It's not. It might not work immediately. So what we need to do is we just need to swap the inputs. And there we go. So now we've got a solid intersection, which is going to give us a whole lot of pieces of geometry where the it will basically return every single point at which this conch and these spheres create an intersection. So it gives us all these um, I don't even know what to call them all these uh, dimples. All right, and the trim so the trim also it has a specific order so the shape we want to trim and the trimming solids. A key thing to note about the um, about the trim component is that your trimming shapes need to be they need to be a closed grip or even or just even a closed surface. If they're not closed, you cannot trim the shape because it needs to it needs to be able to completely remove anything contained it's going to remove any geometry contained entirely in this sphere so if you cannot create complete containment around part of that object there's nothing for it to remove in that case whoops you would need to use a split brick component. And I've just uh, locked Grasshopper up, we'll give it a sec. Cool, so we'll bake that one out as well. And uh, we'll just take a look at the split brick as well. You know, this one is always a bit of trouble because what it's going to give us is it's going to um, it's going to give us two results for every single shape that we plug in, and what that basically is, I'll just preview this off, is the original shape that. Uh, well, basically it'll take each of these spheres and it'll cut them out one by one and create one surface for each of those. Um, so let me just track down a rep here. So these are all my... Oh, these are one sort of selection of the splits and this is the other selection of the splits. Probably not what you're after, but yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a breakdown of using the intersection and solid uh, operation components in the intersect tab.